I'm here at the UK Atomic Energy Authority to visit the RACE facility, Remote Applications in Challenging Environments. So many acronyms. To visit Faiz Rahman, originally a mechanical engineer, but he's going to be telling me how robotics is fundamental in fusion energy. There are two types of nuclear energy. One is fission, one is fusion, one is not so popular, and one is super cool. It happens on the sun, and we're trying to recreate it here on Earth, and we have never been so close. So atoms are fused together, a lot of energy is released, yes. and we're trying to harness that energy to power our lives. Yes, essentially. What we're trying to do here at UKA is we're trying to achieve fusion. We're trying to do something that's really new, really important to us as a species, and it is quite difficult and it's also quite dangerous for a lot of people. So like trying to work within a fusion environment is like radioactive so therefore not very safe for humans. So the idea is we want to get humans out of the way. We want to keep humans safe and we use robots instead because robots are a lot easier to use within that kind of environment. It gets people out of the way and if a robot breaks that's fine but so long that's better than a human actually getting hurt. So give me a whistle stop tour of fusion. Where are we today with it? Um, we're on our way, we still, so we're here at Cullum where we have uh, JET, so that's the Joint European Taurus, which currently holds the record for our longest sustained fusion. So we are currently underway, we're understanding a lot more about fusion now than we did like 70 years ago when it first started. This is Spot, which is a robot from Boston Dynamics. You can see it's a little camera moving around there. Currently we have um, Spot being tested, we're trying to um, identify a use case for it in terms of maintenance. So SPOT itself is a very robust machine, it's a very robust robot. Oh, can I give way for it? It's currently doing a bit of a patrol, looking at different cubicles to check that they're working okay. Um, and the idea for our use case for SPOT is we want to be able to use it in an environment where humans can't go, similar to what we're doing. That looks very much like a real arm. So that's a robot hand attached on the end of an LBR robot. Uh, well, rather we developed the technology which we need to work on much smaller objects. So for example, working with waste which we take out of the reactor. Like this would allow the operator to not only be safe but also to try to work without actually being in there uh, themselves. So instead of developing really sophisticated PPE, mm -hmm. you're actually building a robot instead. Yes, use a robot instead because like ultimately I don't they like I, we would all choose a robot in a dangerous place rather than humans at any point. I'm seeing lots of hands everywhere. There are, there are quite a few hands here and admittedly that is currently what we're working on. If you want to feel that, twist his fingers if you want. It's kind of weird. Oh, whoa. Yes. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you make this hand work? Um, so for this hand, I have a haptic glove here. Um, so this glove allows me to uh, move the fingers on the robot um, as well as feel haptic feedback. Um, you can get that like. That's almost like a twin of that. Can I have a go? Yes, of course you may. Open your hands completely. Yeah, you'll be able to see the hand moving ever so slightly. If you grip it, like full, full ball. There you go. Tell you what, I will set up the robot now and then I'll move the robot and then you can move the hand. You can, we can pick stuff up together, it'll be fun. <laughs> this is what I call teamwork. <laughs> they always say engineering is about collaboration. It's always about collaboration. If I move my hands to the left, the robot goes to the left. Ah. The right goes to the right. Okay, so down. tell me why there are so many rubber ducks in the glove box. Um, <laughs> is that an insider joke or do we have to pick one of them up? Let's pick them up and I'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Yes. Nice. Oh, this is like being at the fairground. There you go. This is a big claw machine. In software engineering, we have something called rubber duck debugging. And rubber duck debugging is essentially our way of trying to solve our problems by talking to a rubber duck. This okay, is, where, where this you, is engineering you? ballet right here. Put it next to his buddy. There you go. Oh, they're together. They're friends again. I mean, with all this robotics, mm -hmm. how much closer does that get us to achieving fusion energy? I'm going to be a bit biased here, but there are two main challenges with fusion. Uh, number one is getting fusion to happen. So like um, all the physics, science necessary to make it a thing. And number two is maintenance. It's all well and good if you create a reactor or, or add a fusion machine, but there's no point if it breaks the next day. Mm. Because once it starts running and close it up, you can't go in and, unless you wait for a bit to cool down. So the question is not, are robots taking 
over humans, it's actually robots are essential yes. for achieving fusion energy. Exactly. And us here at RACE, at UKAA, we're very keen to help out in the robotics side to make sure that as far as maintenance is concerned, we can do it. That's our kind of focus, so to speak. Well, if you want to feel superhuman, you study engineering and you get to wear awesome robotics like this. Thank you so much for no today. No worries. Thank you so much for coming.